Okay, folks, we're looking at the prelim, or not the prelim paper, the final paper that was written by the grade 11s last year at King David. Okay, the first question dealt with ogive curve, so let's, it's not a difficult concept, but you made, you could make silly mistakes. Okay, now remember, just a reminder, your cumulative frequency, if you start at 6 over this specific class interval, then to get the next frequency that accumulates, you say the 6 plus the 23 is 29. So to get the next one, the question actually asked us complete the cumulative frequency. So 29 plus 60 was 89. 8974 added gives you 163. 163 added the 52 will give you a total of 215. Then if you add the 32, you get 247. And finally add 3, you get 250. This column is really not, there's nothing necessary in that column. As long as you your final frequency, cumulative frequency, totals the amount of pupils in this sample. Okay, now big, big thing here. I would suggest to you that you write these down as coordinate pairs because this is what you are going to sketch. This is your class interval and that is your cumulus, cumulative, frequency, cumulative frequency. So the big thing to remember here is you've got a limit. You've got a lower limit of each class interval and you have an upper limit. The classic mistake is to do it the other way around when you sketch. It is convention that the right hand of each of these intervals um, determines the x-coordinate. So your x-coordinate here will be 150, then 155, then 160, 165, 170, 175, and finally 180. And what forms our y-coordinates, we said, would be the cumulative frequency. So there will be 6, then 29, then we have 89. That coordinate pair goes onto the ogive, which we're going to draw. 163, 170, and 215, 175, and 247. And then finally, 180 and 250. Now, very, very important is the point where your ogive is going to start once you diagrammatize it. The next question we ask you to draw the ogive, you'll see over here. Okay, so we need to anchor this ogive. It will anchor at the lower limit. You can see carefully, if you look carefully, these increase by 5. And if you decrease to the previous interval, your ogive will start at the point 145 and anchored on the x-axis at naught. Okay, so let's see. We are now requested to draw these di the diagram, the ogive curve, for three marks. The first question was also asked at three marks. 145 and 0 is where we anchor. Then we go to 150. Now look at your vertical scale. It goes up in tens. 6 will approximately be there, just over halfway. Then your next was 155 and 29. So that's 10, 20, 29 is close to the 30 line. 160 and 89. There's 100, there's 90. 89 is just off 90, so we put our dot there. Then we go to 165, and that's 160. So there's 150, 160, and it's 163, so we can roughly put it over there. The 170 has the y coordinate as 215, so we go 210, 215 is slap dash in the middle there, and then. Uh, 175 goes to 247. Now there's 210, 20, 30, 40. 7 is close, uh, closer to the 250 line than to the, the 240 line. And then 180 will be at 250, which goes way up there. 
Now hold your pen steady folks and join those dots. Try not to have sudden kinks or sharp edges in this diagram because you're going to make readings from this diagram. Okay, so there's our ogive curve. Now we can move on to the questions that they ask us related to the ogive curve. Remember, we're still looking at the very first question. Okay, so I'm going to need this curve. I'm going to zoom out a bit so we can have the curve at hand to do our readings with. Our first question that they ask us is use this ogive curve. Let me just get your paper ready here. Use the ogive curve to estimate the median, the interquartile range for the heights of the learners, which is what this data represents. Show where you read your answers off on the graph. Show where you read your answers. Now remember, this is not difficult, but you can make silly mistakes. You start on your y-axis because that is where the data items. The sample size here is 250 learners. Okay? If I half the 250, I get to 125, which lies approximately there. Now that will be my median value. So I go from my y-axis to the ogive curve. I draw it as accurately as I can there. And then I go vertically down to the x-axis. Now this is the value, value of the median. Okay, so I'm going to put the point A. This here is quartile 2. Now, quartile 2 lies at 125. If you want to, you can write it on there at 125. Data, 125th data item. The value of that quartile is what you read off down here. Now, this is going to be an approximation. It looks more or less like it's just below the middle. So, I'm going to say my first answer I'm going to give them is I'm going to say the median quartile 2 quartile 2 is approximately looks like 162 but even more important read at point a they indic they asked you to indicate where you're reading it off okay so you're reading it from quartile to 125 and you're reading it at point a on the diagram now we need to find the first quartile and the third quartile. So we need to go to 125 and we need to halve 125. Now folks, that's about what? It's 50 is 100 and then 12. So 62.5, 50, 60, 2.5 more or less there. Quartile 1, I go from 62.5 I go to my diagram again with the pink line. Okay, there we go. So we can write here 62,5 degree uh, uh, is the the value that I'm looking at for this quartile. And if I come down to the x-axis x-axis here, I'm going to label this point B. It looks more or less there's 155. 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 160. Okay, so it looks more or less like 159, 158, 159. Remember, the accuracy comes in what you're going to write down here. So quartile 1 is approximately, if I look at the diagram I've got here, at the value of 159. And again, I say read at point B. And I do the same for the top half. If I go to 125 and I add 62.5, I'm reading that off at 187.5. So there's 150, 60, 70, 80. 187.5 is approximately there. That's where I'm going to read quartile 3. And I go, and again I do the same thing. I take my line to the ogive and I go down with it. Now you, you'll agree with me. 
the more accurate your diagram, the more accurate your readings are going to be. Okay, there is going to be some variability in answers here, and we allow for that, folks. It just depends on whether you followed the instructions fully that we gave you over here. So this looks like it's 166, 167, 68, 69, 70. Looks like it's more or less 167. So I'm going to put that down as quartile 3. Quartile 3 here is approximately 167 and I read it at point C and now my IQR will be the difference between quartile 3 which I have as 167 and quartile 2 which I have as 162. So it's 167 minus 162 and that gives me an interquartile range of 9. Now they ask you the next question. In which interval does the upper quartile fall? Now that's quartile 3, folks. Quartile 3 we saw is at 167. And if I go to my class intervals, 167 lies on that interval, 165 to 170. So it is definitely in the class interval 165 and 170 for one mark. Okay, that's a good question just to see if you know what the information means. What percentage of learners are 170 centimeters or taller? Now, if I go to 170 centimeters, I see that there we have between 170, what did they say, 170? Yes. So I'm going from 170 to 180. There's how many in those two class intervals? There's 35 students. And they want a percentage of learners that are taller than that. So how many learners are taller than 170? There's 35. Out of a total of 250 learners, you have to multiply that with 100. Okay, and that result gives you the percentage. Now you'll see that's 14% if you um, do the calculation on your graph. Now we changed this mark from 3 to 2 when we were marking because of the last question which was quite interpretive. Uh, you're working with your calculator to get to the last question. Okay, so number 6, the last question says, we changed this to 3. Determine the standard deviations of the height of the learners in grade 11. Now, folks, you know how to do this. This is pure calculator work. You put your data items in your calculator and you tell the calculator at the end of the day to determine the standard deviation for you. It takes a bit of effort. Once you've done it, you'll see the standard deviation is 6,43. Okay, and this is seriously just calculator work. So remember the catches here are for you to remember that you use your right hand limit and you ground your graph on the left side.